Welcome to the Databricks Skill Builder Series. We're glad you're here. So what we're going to go through today is optimizing table performance using liquid clustering. So what I'm going to do is go through a notebook and we're going to create three tables that are the same, but optimized differently. And then we're going to examine those optimizations. And then the last thing we're going to do is actually query those tables and compare. We'll put our little results in these um, little boxes here. So let's go ahead and check it out. So I reran or ran this ahead of time because um, it takes a little while to run. But basically, this is describing that we're going to do a partition table, a table that has partitioning and z ordering, and then the last one will use liquid clustering. Now, yes, these are not ideal, um, you know partitions, but uh, it's supposed to represent a, a like a real life scenario. So we're going to use classic compute. Um, and then we're going to also disable any caching. So that's to make it a little bit more obvious that the uh, the impact of liquid clustering. Also, photon is not being used as well. So there I'm just creating my schema and catalog and using them. So here's where we create the data. So we start by creating the partition table. And so here we're actually disabling the predictive optimization. Again, same reason, uh, just to make sure we can make it a little more clear the impact on, on a smaller table. Okay, so here we're actually taking a look at that table um, and then we are uh, adding the Z ordering. So we've just done a deep clone. So it's a full, a full clone. It's not like a shallow clone. Um, it's a full clone of the data. And so you can see that um, initially, whoop, there was 9,513 files. So that's in the, um, in the partition table. And then it actually goes through and removes most of those files. Well, removes them all and then adds new files. And here you can see which, um, which things it's being Z ordered by. Let's see. Oh, that must be further down. Okay. So, here we're creating the table, the clustered table. Now um, we're actually just selecting the data out of the partition table to create a new table that's been clustered by origin and arrival time. And then you have to run optimize on that. Notice you also run optimize when you uh, Z order. Okay. And so then let's actually take a look at the data here. So we can see that there is um, 330 different origins. And let's see here. So Atlanta is, is the largest one. So when we're thinking about this in terms of the layout of your data within your table, you're going to have, you know, Atlanta will be a, a good size partition probably query really well because it's um, going to have reasonably sized files. However, um, a lot of these like smaller um, airports are going to have a lot less rows. So the uh, you are going to end up with a small file problem for those. Oops. All right. So Let's now look at our tables. So we can look at them more clearly here. So here's the number of files for our partition table. So we're gonna add that over here. And so we can see the table size. Um, it does have deletion vectors turned on. I should probably turn those off if I want uh, to show extra extra things in terms of optimizations and performance, but deletion vectors are really useful. So you generally want to use those. Now, so if we're looking at the history, 
of the table. This is where we can focus on what exactly is happening to the table in terms of uh, versions. And so we can see here that the table was created, partitioned by origin. Um, let's see. And then here we're just looking again at the number of files, um, the number of bytes, the number of output rows, um, and then the, the runtime. So uh, we can also look down here. Oh, so just noting that, so the table has not actually been optimized, it's simply just partitioned. So here we're gonna go and look at our Z ordered table. So this one, um, also partitioned by origin. So it has 330 files. So let's put that over here. And so you can see deletion vectors are also enabled here. Um, and that there is um, a couple of different versions. We'll take a look at those versions um, in our next step. So here is um, version zero and version one. So basically we have two versions of the uh, table. So the first one is to create it, which was the clone. The second one was optimizing. Um, and so we optimized by uh, arrival time. Now keep in mind it's already uh, partitioned by the origin. So it wouldn't make sense to also um, Z order by the partition, we just want, or by the origin. Okay. Uh, yeah, so just noting that, that by Z ordering, we're able to um, make sure that we are, you know, kind of working on that small file problem by consolidating those down into um, a single file per, per partition. These numbers are out of date. This is when I had a smaller table. So let's look at our cluster table. So now we're looking at our cluster table here where we can see um, it's clustered on both origin and arrival time and there are 11 files. So let's update our graphic here, 11 files. So that means that we're consolidating way down um, more than we would if we were um, partitioning still. So here we've got the table was created. These are op optimizations that are happening based off of adding the additional clustering. So it gets clustered on origin and arrival time. So now let's move into query performance. So quickly here, we can see that querying the partition table on a partition is super fast. And that actually um, querying uh, the partition Z order table on the origin is not faster. Um, and let's go ahead and put these times over in here. So our first query, which our table, the partitioning is optimized for this query in, in particular. So keep that in mind. You can't, you can't optimize for every query you're gonna have, which is why this kind of comes in handy uh, for clustering. Um, if you're going to only write queries that are exactly as your partition, that is gonna be your best option. Um, definitely faster than the other two, but not, not unreasonable. Um, three seconds or even one second, two seconds. So now if we focus on a query that hasn't actually um, you know, isn't, isn't ideal considering the partition. We can see that here it took 3.71 minutes. Uh, 222.6 seconds. Here we're looking at the Z ordered. So actually having it the ordered by the arrival time helped a lot. So now we only have 16.2 seconds, which is significantly better than three minutes. We'll take a look at this clustered table 
uh, same exact query. And so that only takes 3.84 seconds. So we can see that uh, the clustering helped a lot. Um, and so you can imagine that when we're looking at a situation where the tables are, are big, really big, um, that liquid clustering can cause massive optimizations. I've seen um, customers using the liquid clustering and getting like the, the big bag, big benefits, the big optimizations, faster queries. One thing to note, um, if you are going to be writing tables using structured streaming and liquid clustering, you cannot directly cluster on write um, unless you're using a 4-H batch, then the liquid clustering will uh, cluster on write. And so if you are trying to write to a table and query it really fast, so for example, I have one customer that is um, writing to their silver table, the data gets there in you know, a really small number of seconds, maybe even milliseconds, and then the data is being queried immediately. So there's no time to run an optimize command on that table in order for the clusters to be written properly. So um, what we've done is, is implemented a 4-H batch into that streaming structured streaming code so that it actually uh, clusters on write. Um, but other than that, you know, just writing, uh, clustering your tables and, and running optimize on those should uh, really help um, generally, you don't want to partition a table unless it's uh, bigger than a terabyte. Um, and, and that's what I got for today. Thanks for joining. I hope for the, hopefully this was helpful. Ciao.